Right, I am joined here by Colin Nathan, who had a delayed flight, a very, very delayed flight, so we obviously couldn't get you so at the airport. So are we starting off with Viva or Two Time? You choose. Both, Viva and Two Time. <laughs> yeah, I know, it was crazy. So the guys got the three tickets on Emirates, and I was kind of leftovers, so, <laughs> so I came in very late. It was just crazy, it was crazy. But um, yeah, we won the championship again. Ecstatic, very happy. And um, obviously, um, Sivanati, I mean, this was his moment to, you know, redeem himself from that Monte Carlo madness. Yeah, I mean, remember I said to you, it was like one of those moments where it was just like one of those fuck you moments of boxing where he, he got nailed and it got caught with a really wicked shot and he got knocked out. It happens. And I figured to myself, like, we discussed this, I think, in one of the previous interviews, like, do... Do I push for the immediate rematch or do we wait? And obviously I wanted to push for the immediate rematch because I knew that I had the right fighter to beat Kirill, um, just obviously not of the night in Monte Carlo, and it proved to be the correct decision. The crowd on the nights was absolutely insane. I mean, they were all for Curiel, and um, obviously the, you guys garnered a lot of respect at the end of the fight. Yeah, I think the Mexican culture, you, you know, they're very, very respectful. Even when we were... Um, putting the pressure on Kirill, especially in those last two rounds. They were very appreciative of the skill level of, uh, of Sivanati. And, you know, there were no boos or anything like that when we stopped him. So it was just a great reception. And then 10,000 fans, like, against us. I mean, I just, I took it all in. I walked in the ring and I just looked around. And I was thinking, wow, this is just incredible. And it was just a great moment for South African boxing. Sive becomes the first South African to reclaim his world title in an immediate rematch after getting beaten. So there is some sort of historic uh, narrative towards what we you know, accomplished in Owaka. And Owaka is just such a beautiful place. Um, if you, you watch soccer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's Mexico nil and Colin Nathan three. Um, so very, very happy about that result. And just great to be in Mexico. You know, the people, you know, Matram, the guys really treated us well. And it was, just, it was just also a great, great fight because the fight was in two halves. Mm -hmm. And obviously people questioned my strategy going in. And, and just talking about that, I knew Curiel was expecting us to be long from the beginning. And the whole structure of our game plan was to fight in the pocket early on and hit downstairs. And if you notice, Sivanati actually shortened up his punches, which he's never really done previously. And he actually walked Curiel down because when he started hitting him to the body, it was in round number seven where we got that point deducted and the cameras couldn't pick it up, but Sivek caught him with a left hook to the body where I'd noticed that Kirill's face, he visibly winced. And that's after that, when he started keeping it long, the last 40, 50 seconds of round number seven, that's when everything switched. And I said to him, keep it long now. Now, because I knew Kirill couldn't match Nonchingo on the outside. And then literally when we started establishing the jab, it ranged from round eight, it was game over. I'm going to pick something out of what you just said there as well. I know Sibes won and it's all good, but the point deduction in that fight, did you agree with it? Um, no, because we got a point deduction for the use of the head. We got two warnings for holding. Um, but listen, you know, Mark's a very good referee. So um, I thought the standing eight count was kind of questionable. I thought he could have stopped it at that point because Curiel was like on Queer Street. So... Um, it is what it is. I mean, I can't go back and say, you know, I can't point at Mark and say it was, I, I thought it was a little harsh, but you, you heard me crying. And you also heard me, you know, losing my voice like Michael Jackson. So, um, and I'm still trying to get it back. But listen, at the end of the day, the right result, you know, stood and we won. And, and here's the other interesting thing is that one judge had us level. One judge just had, a, oh, the French judge had us around behind and the Mexican was, now I'm going to complain about the, the Mexican judge. I thought he was way off. I think he had us four points down, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you count the knockdown in round 10, we would have been level on one score, up on another score and behind on the Mexican score. And we had two rounds left to bank. So if you add it up mathematically, we still had enough rounds to bank to win a decision. So I was very comfortable. I never panicked at all in the corner. And, and the strategy was exactly what happened in the fight. I mean, you saw the sparring. We used uh, Frank uh, Sitomela for, for a lot of those right hands and that crew punching um, in the pockets. And the plan just worked so brilliantly on the night. And, and even though we were losing rounds um, early on, because after six, I thought we could have been behind by 4-2, you know, um, maybe 3-3, three, three, maybe. 
Um, but in my mind, I knew we were training, but I knew we had enough rounds to bank. And with that knockdown, and then obviously with our stop, the stoppage, it kind of became automatic, which we didn't need the judges for. Yeah, I mean, wow, what, a, what an explosive uh, turnaround as well. I mean, that's what it was. I mean, it was Sive coming back late, but that was part of the game plan, wasn't it? Yes, yes. To obviously slow him down, wear him down to the body. And then once once he slowed down, which we could visibly see in round number seven, is get long in him. Because I knew if we got long early on, like he anticipated, there was always that possibility of getting caught with something fucked up again. So so that's why I wanted to keep it long. Uh, that's why I wanted to keep it in the pockets, keep it short, keep turning him. Kirill was very clever what he did. He kept trapping Siva's foot. Mm -hmm. So, but when he, once he started slowing down and he was falling in, then we could start stepping around. So Kirill was, he's a good fighter. He's a very, very good fighter. But um, I just think we were better on the night. I really do. And, and do, you, do you see Kirill coming back to world level again? I was thinking about that yesterday. It's going to be very, very hard. I think he took a lot of punishment as well in that fight. You know, Sivir, they talk about Sivir, you know, taking a lot of... If you looked at Sivir's defense, he was taking a lot of those shots on the arms and the gloves. Um, maybe. Um, does he beat the major champions now? No. Yeah. I think, you know, it was just one of those lucky shots. You know, I don't want to say a lucky shot. He caught Sivir, we made a mistake. But I don't think he beats any of the four major champions. Sorry, three major champions, Taraji, Gonzalez, and, and Nonchenga. All right, so I'm going to focus on Sibe still because yeah. I think we got three options next. Uh, well, we got one option, but there's two other names in the pot. Uh, obviously, the mandatory is Araneta, who looks like you'll be fighting next. And then you got Ken Shira for unification, and Sonny Edwards jumped into the conversation. I want to get your thoughts on all three. Well, like all three are possibilities. I saw Sonny having a go at Nonita Donaire. They want to fight at 118. I was actually reading that about an hour ago. So that's interesting. Um, Araneta is the mandatory, so we have to fulfill that obligation. And then, of course, if we get offered the unification, that supersedes anything, as you know, by RBF rules and regulations. So right now, I think I just want to embellish this moment. Um, I don't even want to think about his next fight. But, you know, all three are possibilities. So, you know, I think in the next few weeks or a couple of months, we'll kind of figure out what the next step is. All right. So, Sibir has got a, a nice rest now that he can go enjoy himself uh, being the IBF world champion again. Um, if it didn't go his way, what was, <laughs> what was going to be the plan for him? Um, probably would have jumped off a building. Um, no, I'm joking. Uh, listen, he's still, he's young. You know, he could bring him back. Mm. Um, but for me, losing was never an option. Um, I was quite bullish on getting the rematch done. And I was quite bullish on, in my mind, knowing that we're gonna win. And I actually, on the day of the fight, I was walking around thinking to myself, we're gonna stop this guy, we're gonna stop this guy. And I, I was very confident that we would, um, only because I seen Kuriel not being able in previous fights, he didn't like body shots. And I, I figured, you know, with Siva being such a, such a big puncher, if we shortened up his punches, which we did in camp and tightened up his guard, that would really take Kuril by surprise. And even though we were getting out work, like I said, we were still very competitive in those rounds. And the rounds we were losing, they were close rounds. Mm -hmm. But I still think because we were being outpunched and outvolumed, I would have given the rounds to Kuril. But we were getting closer and closer and closer by the stoppage. We really were. Sure. And that was a good stoppage as well. I mean, for for. To stop him, uh, Kyriel, it was the first time he's ever been beaten by stoppage as well. Um, so it, it took someone like a Sibonazzi in order to do it. Um, being in the corner there, you obviously jumped straight into the ring. You, you saw the, the ending of the fight coming. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, after the ninth round, because um, he swiveled his head on that left hook, um, which is classic for the right hand, obviously counter. So I kind of knew, but the round before that, I could see that Kyriel was really starting to slow down and he hated the body shots. So I said to Sibe, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen when I've said to him, keep it long now, keep your base. And when he comes in after the jab, start working those short body shots. And it worked beautifully. And even in round 10, that short right hand over the top, I mean, we worked on shortening up his short right hand, short left hook. And it just, that, that's actually, you know, and, and you heard Corey Edman saying he found the shots. Well, that shot was coming because we, we train hard and prepare hard and practice that shot over and over again, that short chopping right hand. And it was just like brilliant, like when everything, everything just came together on the night, you know, it was just really just, it was just, you know, there are times in the fight that was just so breathtaking that I was watching and I was thinking, 
what an amazing fight. And I was thinking, Colin, get back. Like, mm. you're part of it. You, you know, you're in the fight. So it was just, it was great to be part of. Definitely one of my highlight moments in my career. I've had some amazing moments in my career, and that's definitely one of them. Um, to kind of silence 10,000 Mexican fans who, who obviously want their hometown guy to win, it's, it's, it's something incredible. And, I, you know, the thing is, we won fair and square. You know, we got caught with the shots in our first fights. Um, it happens in boxing, but I knew that Sivas got the right skill set and the right boxing brain and IQ to beat this guy in a rematch, and that's what happened. All right, and obviously Sive, a massive accomplishment for him, um, as, as we mentioned earlier, but from yourself personally as well, you mentioned 3-0 and against Mexico. It hasn't just been three regular fights, it's been an eliminator and two world title fights. So, I mean, for you, on a personal level, I don't think any other South African trainer has done that, as, uh, according to my recollection, in Mexico in particular. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know, but still, you know, it's still a great, I mean, I'm very proud of my achievements and what I've, what I've achieved. And I just, yeah, I mean, sometimes I just need to sit back and like really appreciate my career, which I never really, really do. Um, but I suppose now in the next day, actually maybe, maybe in the next day or two, I'll just sit back and think, yeah, like what an achievement. But yeah, I'm just proud of everyone. And I want to thank everyone involved, Bernie, uh, Sia, Best, I mean, Best is just such an awesome human being. Uh, Shannon and Sean and all the guys have just been so supportive of, of the journey. And also, I'll never forget the people who were around us when we lost, mm -hmm. because that's also important to mention, you know, like everyone, and there were a lot of people who actually thought that I was crazy or stupid taking the rematch. And there were a lot of guys in South Africa who thought we weren't gonna win, who were actually questioning the decision. And you know, all we wanted was just support and love. And those guys were kind of thinking, ah, he's not going to win, you know. So just want to say a big shout out to all you guys and thank you. Like th those are the kind of things that fuel us to, to achieve and, and get these results, you know, because, you know, not everyone's going to like us. Not everyone's going to, you know, we're not money. Not, not everyone can love us. But it is what it is, you know. So it's just, it's just great. Oh, by the way, the odds were 16 to 1 against us because my one mate put down a hundred dollars in the states and he made back sixteen hundred dollars so yeah it was just it was a very very big win very very big win yeah gee i mean that's that's massive i mean i can see how that could be maybe happen with the knockouts and it being in mexico and you know all the variables but still 16 to 1 is yeah, it's crazy. that's a hectic one um next assignment for you is alfred lamsey if i'm not mistaken before yeah. Boxing five. Yeah, so I'm leaving on Monday with Alfred. Um, looking forward to him. He's just one awesome young fighter. Um, good prospect, hits hard. Um, I just think the world of his talent, and I think he's, he's destined to become world class and potentially even a world champion. And I think in the next year or two, we're going to be pressing for him to fight for a world title. He's, he, he's that good. And he's just, he's hungry. He wants it. This is what he wants for his life. And it's just great to be around him and his coach Ebenezer, you know. So that's that's the next uh, next mission. Next mission, and obviously, uh, I think when you get back, we'll speak about the boxing five stuff as well. Unless you want to just quickly just give a quick uh, mention to that with DJ Creel, obviously at the main event at Superfly. Interestingly yeah. enough, Superfly, um, he's got a bit of weight to lose. So yeah, just looking to a great fight. You know, it's a it's a bumper fight card for boxing five. Uh, Kane Fury, Caden Truter. Um, Ishmael Card, we've got Katleko Can you say we've got such a stacked fight card um, that I think the event's going to be sold out. I can tell you right now, Ken Fury's already bought like a crazy amount of tickets, and it's just going to be an incredible evening for Boxing Five to launch the first fight of fight card of the year, and just excited about the year. So we'll talk about it again, yeah. but uh, right now I just want to sit back and think about Steven Lati's great win. Right, 100%. And uh, we'll let you rejoice in the moment and actually get some rest. Uh, I know that the, we didn't get through the flight quite particularly. It was a long, very long flight. You didn't even fly to Johannesburg. Dude, it took me three days to get home. It's ridiculous. The fight, the fight was on Friday. I got home last night, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. It's, it's fucking insane. That's longer than our flight back from Saudi. Yes, and we had a stopover as well. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. There we have it. All, yeah. all the best, Cole. We'll see you soon. Yeah, sure. Thanks.